All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Madam Rose's presentation on reselect and selector functions. Um, it's kind of a follow-up to the last discussion I did on, did on Redux, because, frankly, I think reselect is a very important tool with uh, Redux, because it makes it... It definitely helps performance and makes it a heck of a lot easier to use. Although, that presentation isn't really necessary for this. I'm not going to refer back to it, but it's also good. I recommend go watching it as well. Uh, so yeah, what is reselect? And it's basically what reselect is, it's a utility for making these so-called selector functions. They're kind of like a getter function, sort of, where you pass in, you can see here on the right, you pass in the state, and you get some sort of data from it. Um, those are kind of a very simple one, where it's just a one-to-one -one mapping, doesn't even use the library. But the library helps you make these more complicated ones, which are nice because they're memoized, and they basically can be used for computing data on the fly. Um, yeah, so said, what's this already? Um, yeah, so in, in terms of the, the things that they do, like obviously, like I said, it, I'm, I'm going to lie a bit right now and say you just pass in the state, and you just get out some data. Um, that'll change a bit later on. Um, they kind of mask the whole uh, state tree. So these ones are kind of, the function name's actually longer than just calling out the field name. So they're not as helpful, but you can see like some of the other ones like get current user here. And I'll, I'll show you some examples from our, uh, the React Native app where it really is kind of maxing or masking a lot of like the complexity of the store. And again, kind of like getters, if the structure of the store needs to change, you just change it in the selector and you don't have to deal with any of the calling code. Um, yeah, they're used for t computing data, which is kind of the main thing of them. Um, again, I can show you some more examples later on. This one's just very simple. It's to get the current user, takes the list of all the users and the current user ID and just, or sorry, the map of current, all the users and just returns you the user object. Most important thing though is what this create selector function does, which is actually basically the entirety of reselect is it memoizes those results. So if the state doesn't change, you should get the exact same object back, which is awesome when you're doing something more expensive. So yeah, here's again, this example has some really simple selectors or the first two where they're not memoized, they're just a function, takes in the state, returns a thing. The cur get current user selector here is kind of, it. it's, the big example. It basically composes the first two functions, and then it uses the return value. Or it, so it'll pass the state in the first two functions, and then pass the return values into the final uh, result function, which then actually does like the remainder of the work. Um, See, so yeah, why is it kind of important that we memoize this stuff? It's basically so you always get the exact same result out every single time. Um, you call it, which makes it very easy for checking, like, if anything's changed. So our, our web app doesn't really do this very well, but we have, like, components should update all over the place, and it's, like, doing all these deep checks and stuff, which is not nice. But meanwhile, then we have the React Native app, which just, instead of using components, it uses pure components, which automatically just do a shallow check across all the fields. So here you can see if you call the get current user twice, it will return the exact same... Uh, user, or like the exact same user object every time you call it. it. Should actually be current user two there, but whatever. Then if you say we use a Redux action to change some of the object, get the current user again, and you'll see it's false this time. Um, however, the beauty of like the way the reset, uh, like the selectors are structured, which this probably looks kind of weird, the fact that it like you're passing in functions and then some kind of combining function at the end, or you're all composing it, which that makes it, that that's used to basically make it so like if unrelated data changes, it will still know that, hey, I can keep returning the exact same value here. So like current user three is exactly the same as current user four, for instance. Uh, so yeah, the, com the composition, which is kind of the confusing part, Really, like, if we just wanted to memoize stuff, we could just do this last example. Um, just get current user and checks, is the, has the state changed? If so, just update the value and return it, which is kind of what reselect does internally. But the fact that it breaks everything down to these smaller functions is um, 
means that it can be a lot more precise with like when it returns the same results. So here, for example, get current user ID and get all users. It will only read. It'll basically only regenerate that like last chunk of data if the return values of either of those two functions change. So, like if you're not touching state dot current user ID or state dot users, it will still just use the memoized result here. If not, it'll actually go and regenerate it. Which, set like I said, that's really nice because if something unrelated like the user, like some preferences change or like they join a new channel or something, this will still return exactly the same because this has not changed. Um, OK, so now we get to this part is more complicated. And I'm still, it, it, it's kind of the weird part, which basically, like, th this is all purely like state driven, which is nice for the current user. But what if you want to get some arbitrary user? Because you have, like, a, say, a list of users where you want to display like, the profile picture, username, everything, and you want to do it in a way that is very nice and performant. So basically, the kind of addition to the selector is it can actually take two arguments. Actually, I might be able to take an arbitrary number, but for most cases, you'll just use two arguments. You'll have the state, just as before, and you'll have some sort of props object, which usually would be like the component props um, for whatever your Rack component is. Um, so when you pass in, so we can hear, see here uh, when I'm getting name one and name two, name three, it's passing in the state of the object and that props blob. In in the actual like construct, or sorry, in the actual selector, that props blob is passed as a second argument to all of the selectors except for the final one, which that's kind of nice passed to the final one, but that's a side note. Um, yeah, and then so it can actually use that props to do other things like in this case it just has the user id in other case we're using it for like the channel id when you're getting i'll show you a actual example getting like a list of posts and a thread um but it gets passed into you get state.users and then here it returns some object um in this case it's returning an array of all the different names for whatever reason now the fact that you might be having multiple components calling them with their own props blobs introduce a problem in that it's not memoized. Like say you have three different user components here and one and two of them are or sorry, two different user components. One of them is passing in like looking for the ID one, two, three, four, the next one's one, two, three, five. Because of that, it's gonna record the like list of names for the first user. And then as you go to get it for the second component, it'll dump out that first list of names, record that one. And then it'll, when you go back to the first one, it'll dump that. And so basically, you're not actually getting any memoized stuff there, which is not good. So basically, the natural solution to this is since you already have a selector function for your selector, is, or sorry, a, a factory function for your selector, you make a factory function for your factory function for your selector, which is or a factory function that calls the create selector factory function. It's complicated. Um, here, this is kind of a brief example of the for the thread scene that we have in the um, mobile app, where it, th th this is the part that kind of takes some time to wrap your head around. Have the selector for getting posts in a thread. We pass in props containing the uh, the channel ID that this is in and the root ID of the post. And again, so th this is just your selector function, same as before. But instead of having like a constant selector function, it's actually a, fa a factory that makes a selector function for that. So basically, every time you call this, you'll get a new selector for your component. And then you'll basically have one selector for component. And each one will be memoized on its own. So like for every single thread view in this example, we'll have its own selector. And as long as its props don't change, its selector will always return the same value. No, nice and like that. And in this case, this is something that you might not have seen. It it it's definitely not necessary most of the time in um, uh, Re or with Redux. But basically, instead of having just passing in a map state to props function into the connect, you're passing in another factory function that generates that map state to props. And yeah, so it's just kind of a level of one factory function for the selector, one for the map 
map state of props, and then it allows you to have like each thing will have its own selector, and so it'll be memoized all on its own, and it won't run over the other components. Uh, like save results. Um, yeah, th this part we. Oh, I think this is probably actually the only place in our code base right now where we use it. It's generally like not very uh, wide, or it's only used for more complex cases. Because in most cases, you have everything you need in the state, and you can just ignore the props completely. Um, yep. So yeah, just a bit more. Um, we, again, we use it in our React Native app, and it'll be used also in the web app once we switch over to fully to Redux. Um, most, almost every selector is in the Redux tree right now since we split that out. Um, there's still one more left in the mobile, so I'll just show you quickly a couple of the, um, a couple of selectors that we haven't used. So here, this is just forgetting the current team. It's straightforward. It's basically exactly the same as the get users. You pass in the ones to get like the data that will affect the current team. So if either get teams changes or get current team ID changes, then it'll spit out the new team. So that one's very straightforward. This, sorry. this one is more complicated. This one is for getting the user's theme. So we see here, it takes in the preferences. It takes in our current team ID, because you can have a different theme on each team. Uh, first, it looks for the preference on their team, tries to find it. Um, if it can't find that, it gets just their global theme. Um, and if it can't find that, then it'll get the default theme here. Uh, it does some stuff to, if it's a JSON blob, it'll parse that out. If not, it looks at the uh, some theme constants to pull out what the actual theme is there. But this is kind of, this is the really standard case for selectors. Like, it has some sort of potentially expensive computation. Like, in this case, it's just looking through a couple of objects in a field. If not, it's deserializing some JSON, which, again, isn't particularly, like, it's not particularly complex. But the fact is, I'm pretty certain almost every single component in the app calls get theme. If, if not, it's like 80% of them do, because it needs to get just a color or something silly like that. But because we have the selector here memoizing the results, it's not recomputing this like a hundred different times every like frame it renders. It's just doing it once, and it just always checks like, okay, these simple things don't change. It can return the exact same theme, and then the other code's built to handle that. Um, and we'll just use it as it does currently. Um, and yeah, so here's just the full, again, is that get post for thread one. Um, I can show you the uh, container here, full uh, thing here. So just basically every time you create a thread container, it creates its own selector, and then it will use that selector every single time to memoize and save the same results. Um, yeah, still might take your might take some time to get your head around that one still because it's still kind of funky. I had to write unit tests to confirm it actually worked how I expected it did because um, I didn't even trust it at first. Um, yep, so yeah, that's reselect. It's the library itself is dead simple. It's like I swear it's like 150 lines of code. Um, and it, it it's just very nice for keeping everything like tidy, keeping it so most code doesn't care how the state tree looks in case we decide to change that suddenly one day. Um, keeps it or makes it so all the like results are kind of saved and not re or re recalculate every single frame. Because like as I mentioned last week with the Redux thing, when one part of the Redux store changes, the entire store technically like will get changed. So unless you're doing either some sort of deep equality checking every single frame, which is a nightmare, or using again these reselector or uh, just selector functions to uh, save your computations there, it, it it kind of becomes a nightmare. So yeah, you can join us on our pre-release site at Matt, um, where we run kind of the latest version, but it's our whole team on it. Um, got channels there for developers, contributors if you're looking to help out. Uh, and then kind of some more specific ones for Redux and the React Native apps right now. Um, yep, that's it.